Tonight, new concerns about the mental health of college students on campuses all over the country. Our Dr. Malika Marshall is here. And Dr. I mean, these numbers are staggering. The crisis on campus, colleges and universities struggling to meet the growing demand for mental health services for their students. Yeah, it's such a problem. The American College Health Association is holding a national symposium. In fact, rates of anxiety and depression among college students in the U.S. have soared in the past As decade. As students head back to campus, colleges and universities across the country are facing a growing demand for mental health care. And the suicide rate in colleges is astronomical. I mean, a, a, a college student kills himself every day. It's research finds a huge number of undergrads are suffering from mental distress. In January of 2014, Madison Holleran took her own life. A middle distance runner at the University of Pennsylvania, Holleran looked like the model student athlete, but in reality, she was struggling to adapt to an Ivy League school. There were two things that I noticed immediately about uh, this school. Um, so the first thing that I noticed, which was great, was that everybody was really open to meeting other people. Um, so I'll give you an example. Um, my freshman year, I did this thing where I would get lunch with a random person every day. But what would happen is that when I would sit down with these students, despite the fact that they were very open to meeting other people, they were not open. Everybody went to the most parties, everybody was getting the best grades, yet everybody never studied, right? Because they were all just internally super, super smart and able to get those grades, right? Another way to say it is I see students putting on a mask. And I thought, okay, this probably isn't good. Um, but that being said, uh, I've been at this school for three days, so I have no evidence that it's bad. Um, and even if I did have evidence that it was bad, um, what am I going to do about it? Um, halfway through my freshman year, um, Maddie Holleran dies by suicide, who was in my class. Um, and then at the end of my freshman year, one of my best friends at school was in clinical crisis. It was between um, Maddie Holleran's death and then the experience with my friend that I said, okay, I now know the school well enough to figure out what I'm going to do, because I'm going to do something to help solve this college student mental health crisis. I just have to find out what it is. Ultimately, uh, I started doing research on this phenomenon called penface, right? And penface is uh, a mask. If you wear this mask that says, I'm perfect, everything's perfect, um, and that's just what it is, right? You, you hide your true feelings. And what I found out was that uh, pen face is in no way unique to pen. Uh, at Columbia, it's called Columbia face. Uh, all the way on the West Coast at Stanford, it's called duck syndrome because a duck glides across the water gracefully, but underneath the surface, its legs are going at a million miles per hour, right? A student, graceful on the surface, going crazy underneath. Pen face, Columbia face, duck syndrome, um, all related to the psychological phenomenon of imposter syndrome um, is, is literally an international uh, phenomenon. The suicide rate is up three times since the 1950s, but more specific to the work that we do here at the Reflect organization, 62% um, of college students, uh, according to the American College Health Association, report feeling very lonely. What is needed to be preventative is a cultural shift. We need a cultural shift away from the debilitative culture of perfection and towards one of mutual connection, mutual support, being proud to be yourself, right? And the only way that we are going to get there is if we empower students to create that cultural shift. And so what I had to do is I had to form an organization that empowers students to do that. We have the Reflect Dinners, um, which are monthly dinners which we host at all of our chapters uh, that are huge. And when students come to our dinners, uh, they are split up into discussion groups. 
last week we had uh, a dinner at Columbia. It was a Columbia Reflect dinner. And this is a picture from the dinner. That picture comes from 20 minutes after the dinner ended. Those students were still in the room. If you zoom in on the placard that's on that table, it says loneliness. Every single one of those students chose this discussion group because they were feeling lonely, because they had nobody to go to on campus. 20 minutes after the dinner ended, these same students are still there, hugging, laughing, and walking out of the room together. Right? That's why we do what we do. We create these microcosms, these small environments in which college students see this is what it would be like if we were open and honest. This is what college would look like if we lived a life unmasked. This is how we would feel if we lived a life unmasked, if we mutually supported each other, right? And because they experience that there, and because they experience that alongside this incredibly strong message that you all are the ones who can make this change, and in fact, you are the only ones that can make this change. You need to be the ones to make this change because nobody else can. Then they go out and they make the change on campus. The vision is not to have reflect chapters at every single campus on every single college in the world. The vision is to have no reflect chapters because everyone is proud to be themselves. Because everybody is proud to take off the mask, follow their passions, and support others as they do the same.